We are creating a face illustration that can be used in an infographic. Our goal is less detail, more meaning. This video will be helpful to illustrators and people who work with them. We'll first start with a sketch. So why do we need a sketch? Physically, moving our hands through space helps our brain capture just what the shape is. Now, we're gonna simplify everything. We're gonna say that everything is either a light spot, unshaded, or a dark spot, shaded. As one photographer said, when you photograph people in color, you see their clothes. When you photograph people in black and white, you see their soul. So, let's capture some soul here. Our style rules are that the face will be symmetrical and some features will be exaggerated to convey the character. And it's okay if things don't work on the first try, that's how we learn. Now let's choose a photo. But we can't trace a head from a single photo because the photo is flat and the head is not. No one photo lights up every surface of the face equally, so we're gonna have to combine several photos in our head to do this. We'll go for a younger photo here because it still shows the bone structure underneath. Now we'll choose one side of the face and reflect it. We're gonna fix the forehead here because it looks bigger in other pictures. Now we'll trace the shape of the face and we'll mark the three main features, the eyes, lips, and nose. Here, it's okay to think about them as geometric shapes. Now we're gonna use a brush to sketch in the shapes, which will guide us in building the vectors. And here we can apply what we've learned from sketching on paper. You might wonder why we're jumping around a lot. Why don't we draw the face from top to bottom in some sort of a logical order? Well, sometimes you can't force yourself to see all the distinctive features of the face in the order that you'd want. So, it's okay to draw them in the order that you do see them. In a way, our thinking here is like quantum mechanics. We're not sure that anything is there until we decide that it's there. And then there's this key moment when Disconnected details come together when you notice just enough of them to make the illustration look like the real person. And here, it's the eye that really communicates the personality. One important thing with the eye is that we want him looking straight at us. And we want that gaze to be intense. And that way, we feel like we can peer into his soul. And to achieve that effect, we're gonna be liberal with the dark colors around the eye. Uh, the eyebrows are gonna be darker and the shadows uh, around the eye are gonna be darker than uh, what uh, is maybe even comfortable. And to check if we're right, we're going to periodically zoom out and see how it looks from far away. Uh, maybe looking up close, it, it looks a little bit too dark. At a distance, it's gonna look right. So here we're creating a lot of pseudo shadows. They're not shadows, they are just uh, darker spots, but they look like shadows and give our flat image that depth and that delusion of uh, dimensionality. Another really prominent feature that makes Arnold un unlike any other face is his chin. Uh, it's so masculine and so forward that we really want to put more detail in there, chisel it out, and show just how masculine it is. Now it's important to make sure that every vector shape by itself is beautiful, and the way we do that is by adjusting the Bezier curve handles. When you build these curves, imagine that you're pouring liquid onto the surface, and as you watch it spread on it, you notice there's no angular shapes, there's no straight lines, there's not a lot of sharp edges, it's all really fluid. So now it's time to check our work, we'll mirror the face, we'll zoom in and out and make sure that the resemblance is preserved. 
And now we're on to building the hair and the finer features of the face. Now that we've definitely achieved some resemblance, the main goal is to make sure that every vector shape is just right, that it by itself is beautiful and that it conveys the overall shape. So we're going to be going back and readjusting and putting a little bit more of the dimensional look in by creating more uh, fake shadows here. And probably we'll need to create a few more surfaces to uh, separate one feature from another and again to make this flat image look more dimensional. Now we're going to think about the hair. So we're going to take that from a different picture of him, a more recent one. Same with the wrinkles. A lot has happened between 30 and 68 years old. And this is a great opportunity to show his personality and what he has been through in life. So the smile lines, for example, we're going to put three of them. Um, they hint at his fun-loving personality. What I notice here is that the face of a 68 year old uh, as he is now is actually more interesting than a 30 year old because you see a lot more personality and uh, you kind of see an imprint of his life story on his face. So maybe that's one reason to look forward to aging in a strange way. And especially around the eyes we're going to see a lot more texture. We're going to set it even deeper just so that he looks at us from the depth and it's going to create that dramatic effect of um, our eye contact with the illustration. And since we're not using any gradient here, what we'll do is we will break surfaces into smaller surfaces where they're curved. So on the lip we're going to create one curve by putting in just one more surface, slightly darker, to hint that there is a, a curve there. Now with the large important wrinkles on the forehead, we're not going to be tracing them, but we'll capture the general idea behind them, what they're trying to convey in his face and emphasize that and create a more geometric look for them. Now that we've made him look like he's frowning, I see that that is his personality and we're going to exaggerate that even more by putting darker colors, more shadow, and we're going to check if it looks good by zooming out. Now zooming out, I see that the center of the face looks right. Now we need the hair and the finer details in the face, especially the smile lines and the under eye circles and some of the crow foot wrinkles. Now that we pencil that in, it looks like we're really conveying the character. Now looking at an older picture, I see that the mouth has dropped a little bit with age. Just how much is uh, a little bit hard to pin down, but trial and error is the best way. Now, every time we zoom out, we look for where we're missing more of the detail and I see that it's the eye. Uh, we're gonna put more of the texture in there, more dimensionality. Again, we want him looking at us and we want him to look from a place where he's really confident. And to create that confidence, we're gonna create a, a characteristic squint for him in the eye. The emotion behind this squint is uh, of someone who could lift 500 pounds, so it's not a light-hearted emotion, this is an intense emotion. Now with the hair we're gonna do two things, we're gonna capture the general silhouette and the direction of it, emphasizing just maybe one or two locks inside, we're not gonna go into the finer detail to keep it consistent with the rest of the face. To split the hair somewhat naturally, we're gonna go in with an eraser and 
tear up the edge a little bit. And now we're going to generalize those locks into even larger chunks so that we have just a few strands of hair and show the general direction. Now why did we choose this particular hair? Well that's a good question because he's had different haircuts from the Conan movie with really long hair to his uh, later movies where he had really short hair. But it's interesting that he got married uh, with a really short crew cut. So uh, we're gonna go for this tough guy uh, cut right here because more than anything I think we think of Arnold Schwarzenegger as a tough guy. Last we're going to emphasize the wrinkles and deepen the frown and put uh, some more wrinkles on the nose and around the eyes just so that we really focus on the way he's looking at us first because the, the eye of the viewer is going to go to where most details are which is around the eyes. The best types of illustrations evoke two opposite kinds of emotions. Some people love it when they look at it and others hate it. And when they do, you know you did a good job. And now is the time to check if the illustration looks like Arnold. We're going to mirror the face and we're going to zoom out to check the resemblance and see what we need to fix. And here we're going to fix the hair, we're going to give it just one direction. Now we could have just left it like this and stopped right here, but what makes the difference between a great illustration and a good illustration is the fine detail that's found in the small things and so it's worth spending your time on it to get them just right. Looking at all the surfaces together we want to make sure that none of them are too flat. If they're too flat the dimensionality of the face is lost so we're looking for surfaces seeing where they might be split up into extra surfaces so that the face looks more interesting. Now you've probably noticed that a lot of the details in this illustration come from the artist's imagination and the only way you could have an imagination about someone, especially people who you've never met, uh, is to be interested in what they do and understand their philosophy in life, what they want to achieve in life. So in this case, uh, we really like Arnold Schwarzenegger, are really interested in his philosophy, and the way we understand him is what we reflect in this illustration. While working on this illustration, what we always kept in mind was that this is someone who wasn't born a hero. He was born in quite unfortunate circumstances, actually. It was a poor uh, village in post-war Austria and to get from there to who he became it was a struggle and the struggle is reflected in the way he looks at us. But at the same time it's not like he caved in under the intense pressure. He was able to stay the funny man in a lot of circumstances and take life lightly, which is also reflected in his face. Since we're illustrating in 2D, we have to use some tricks to create a, an illusion of depth and three-dimensionality. So one of the tricks is just to make one half of the face darker. Finally, let's give him some clothes because the governor needs to be dressed. So we're going to put him in a suit from the governor time. Do we recognize him? Yes, this is Arnold. And now the illustration can become part of an infographic. 